Hello and welcome to another season of Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler. I'm your host, Kelly Loft, Athletic Communications Director at Southwest Minnesota State University. And once again this year, we'll talk Mustang men's basketball with the head coach, Brad Bigler. We'll take a look at highlights, preview the upcoming week's games, and talk Mustang basketball throughout this entire 2010 and 2011 season here at Studio One and at smsumustangs.com. And joining us as always for his second season now as head coach is the Mustangs uh, sideline general, Brad Bigler. And Coach, uh, thanks for being with us. We've had a three games down already during this course of the last week and a half as we began this 2010-11 uh, season. But again, uh, great to be back as we uh, talk Mustang men's basketball with the fans and kind of let them know uh, what's going on in mu with Mustang men's basketball. And so far, as you mentioned, the Mustangs are 2-1 and one on this uh, non-conference portion of their season. They opened the season on November 14th, beating Northwest Missouri State, a Good road win for the Mustangs on 72-67, uh, to 67, then played on the road at Division I South Dakota State, and then had their home opener last Saturday versus Minnesota Morris on the 20th of November and won that one 87-65. to 65. And, Coach, we've got lots to talk about. We've got highlights from the games uh, so far this season. But so far, three games into it, you've had a, a different non-conference schedule. We've had a Division II on the road, a Division I on the road, a Division III at home. And your thoughts so far through three games of, of this season? Well, hopefully that, uh, that non-conference schedule will prepare us for the NSIC action. Um, the, uh, the schedule with the home-and-home -home with Northwest Missouri State, uh, that played out when we unfortunately had to back out of a tournament. Some things ended up developing, and they were going to close the tournament, and then that didn't work out, so we decided to go home-and-home. -home. So that is a, a tough two-game Division II opponent who I think uh, our Mustang fans on Saturday are going to see how good they really are when they come into town. Yeah, the Bearcats uh, coming to Marshall on Saturday of uh, this Thanksgiving weekend, taking on Southwest at 3 o'clock afternoon, uh, just a single men's game versus uh, the Bearcats. And uh, as you mentioned, the Mustangs did beat Northwest Missouri 72-67. to We'll talk about that game later on in the show. But uh, you played three games now in this season, and uh, like we said, we, we've had some very good opponents to play. A very good Division Three team that probably is one of the favorites to win their conference. A, a Division One school that's already beaten Iowa, and, and again Northwest Missouri that plays in uh, one of the best Division Two conferences in the country in the uh, MIAA. And, uh, your overall thoughts? You're trying to still, I'm sure, to get in the rotations down or whatnot. You've played a lot of guys so far in the first three games, and probably will be continuing that on Saturday as well. But uh, overall, your thoughts since you began practice on October 15th to, to where we are now here, getting in late November. Well, starting practice in October, it was uh, a situation where we have a lot of new guys, nine new guys on the roster this year, and, and, it, uh, and it made practices a little bit slower at, at first. It, it, uh, to get through those first beginning drills, the drills that we've done traditionally uh, through this program, it, it took a little bit to get going, but uh, I thought the guys have adjusted well. I think they've uh, improved throughout the August, now we're into the games. And now with these first four games, it's about giving some guys some opportunities. Like you said, getting into those rotations, uh, developing some consistency. Uh, it'll be nice to, uh, once we get a little bit healthier with Will Giddings coming back this weekend, hopefully that'll help out with some of those rotations. And overall, uh, we're pleased. And it's a, it's a situation where we need to stay positive with these young guys, with these new guys. And throughout the year, we're going to be a team that grows, uh, grows greatly throughout the year. Well, one thing that's a little bit different this season and makes it tough, I'm sure, as a coach, is uh, you know we've added two conference games to the conference schedule, and you have one less game scheduled. They can only play 26 regular season games according to NCAA rules, and you get two, three games, or four games, and now we've got conference starting up the first weekend of December. So you, you don't get a lot of time to, to see what your team can do. And I mean, when you played, we didn't start conference play until January, and you had seven or eight games under your belt. How difficult is that as a coach, or you just? got to bear down a little bit harder on these four non-conference games. Well, I think it does bring a little bit more sense of urgency. I think as a, as a whole conference, you look at all the teams, I, I'd say there's quite a few teams that aren't probably ready for NSIC action to start, uh, whether it's injuries, whether it's figuring out rotations like ourselves. Um, it, it's, um, it, definitely, it, it definitely makes you put in more of the game plan in early in the season, making sure the guys are doing the little things and, and de developing your scheme. Well, a couple of guys that you need to 
to weigh on heavily uh, to help you get through this and the non-conference schedule and to get guys ready as your upperclassmen. You've got two seniors on this year's squad, guys that have been in the program now for five years. Let's talk about Scott Rail and Taylor Hughesby, guys that uh, have really you know, been great uh, you know, anchors for this basketball program and great leaders so far and both having very good seasons uh, uh, in their senior year. Talk about those two and how important they are to this basketball team. Well, earlier this year we named both of them captains and uh, what they bring to the team is they bring that just that effort, uh, that daily effort that you need to be a, a championship caliber team. And you'll never question Taylor Hughesby or Scott Rail's effort. Uh, they've been great leaders so far in handling the new guys and being open to the new guys, communicating in the right way with the new guys. And as far as production on the basketball floor, it's uh, with Scott, we've seen him come out and put up some pretty impressive numbers his first three games. He'll be a guy that we'll rely on a lot throughout the year. He's a guy who has developed his scoring, a guy who can score from the perimeter now, as well as being a low post presence, and a guy that uh, hey, defensive rebounding is going to be a key for our team. And how he rebounded on third or last Saturday was uh, was uh, important for our team. And he's only going to get better. And he's uh, he's taken on this leadership role in the right way, uh, as well as Taylor Hughesby, who Taylor, uh, he's a guy who. Off the, floor, off the floor is an outstanding person and is a leader in every regard. And on the floor, we, we just need to keep Taylor Hughesby out of foul trouble a little bit more this year. He's a guy who, when you look at, I look at the stat line, uh, his most important stat for me right now is minutes. And that takes a lot of pressure off some of these other guys that have to step up where if he can take up some more minutes, he can be a more consistent defensive effort, uh, defensive player on, the, uh, on that end. It's a situation where uh, the combination of those two, we're going to rely a lot on them. And, and I'm very fortunate to have them because I think as far as in the, when you look at the conference, those two guys are as good four or five combinations as there is in the conference. Well, we're obviously very familiar with those two players, Coach, and obviously returning players from last season. Jordan Miller had a very good season uh, as a redshirt freshman a year ago. Lavion West is in the starting lineup and, and, and some others, and, and Trent Carlson. But there's a lot of new players. You mentioned nine different players uh, you know, that are going to play this year, either as a redshirt from last year or a true freshman. And, and that's one thing that – we haven't had to rely on the last four or five years. It's been true freshmen, but this year you have three of them in the in the lineup, and and, and that's going to happen when you have a big recruiting class that graduated last year with uh, those uh, great players that helped get you to the Elite Eight two years ago. But uh, so far, so good for these freshmen. They're learning as we go, and and uh, I'm sure that's why it's important that after a few more games here, that we can't go with that freshman. Uh, angle anymore. Now they're established college players and need them to grow up fast. Talk about the three true freshmen that are uh, playing this year for the Mustangs. Well, we'll start with Bernard Birch first. Bernard is a guy who's starting right now at the point guard spot, a guy who we will count on to uh, play a good, mo good part of minutes. Uh, he's a guy physically who a lot of times freshmen when they come into the conference, they have a tough time physically matching up with guys, athleticism, the speed of the game. And uh, as far as speed, I don't think Bernard's ever going to have a problem with speed. The guy is fast, the guy is athletic, and he's physically ready to go. Now it's with Bernard, it's about uh, improving uh, as he manages the game, as he manages the team, as he makes sure everyone on, this, on the floor is on the same page. And some of those being those floor leader, that's, that's the thing that we need to develop with Bernard. And, and he's doing a good job. He's making steps in the right direction. And it's just being a freshman and understanding how vocal he needs to be to make us a better basketball team. Uh, with Nick Smith, Nick Smith right now is backing up Taylor Hughesby at the five. Uh, Nick is a kid who, over the course of his career, we'll see, uh, we're going to see a lot of things out of Nick. His ability to step out and shoot the three, his ability to, uh, to finish in the paint, and he also provides us a little bit more of a shot blocking presence than maybe so uh, Taylor Hughesby. And so we'll look for, Taylor, uh, for Nick Smith to, mm -hmm. to eat up some of those minutes at the five, uh, as well as Taylor. And then we're, the last guy is Derry Jones. Uh, Derry Jones is a, is a wing, maybe even a combo guard at some point where he can play some point in certain situations. He's a guy who can score the basketball. He can score the basketball in a variety of ways. He has the ability to get to the rim. He has the ability to knock down pull-up jumpers, and he can shoot the three. So he's a guy who, over the course of the season, uh, you know, right now his minutes are down a little bit, but over the course of the season, 
it won't be surprised if he earns his way into that in that rotation. Yeah, they're learning as we go and get playing some very good competition in these first four games of non-conference play. And now we go to some redshirt freshmen, guys that have been in the program now for a, a year plus, and that includes William Giddings, a guy you talked about earlier who did play in the first game of the season, had a big three-pointer against Northwest Missouri State, but has missed the last couple of games with an injury. And then Matt Zager, a uh, shooting guard uh, from the Shakopee, Minnesota, and, and uh, he's played very well uh, this season. Had a big game against Minnesota Morris, and he can shoot from the outside, but despite only you know not taking many three-pointers in that Morris game, he still got to the line made some baskets and scored 20 points. And uh, those guys are going to be counted on as well as you talked about. And, and Matt, uh, with a big 20 point game against Minnesota Morris. And, and the one thing about those two is in high school, they scored a lot of points. Uh, both of them right now are coming off the bench and they're providing a great spark. Uh, Matt is a kid who kind of like Derry can score from all three different levels. He's a guy who, when he puts up points, he can put up points in a hurry and, and, and in bunches. And, as we saw against Morris, he does a great job of getting out in transition and running. He's also a guy who uh, he can crash the boards and make plays when he needs to on that se in that scenario. Uh, Will Giddings, yeah, in that first game, that three that he knocked down against Northwest Mo, that was a big-time shot. Um, Jimmy Abraham got in the paint, nice kick out to Will, who just stepped up, knocked it down, and it was a big shot to, to give us some momentum in the second half. So we look for... Those two to be uh, to grow as a team as we do as a team. Well, the Mustangs are two and one on the season. As you mentioned, they opened the year with a road win at Northwest Missouri State, 72 to 67. Then went on the road, continued their uh, two-game beginning road trip, and uh, played at South Dakota State on the 18th of November, and uh, played very well at times, but did lose 94 to 80 to uh, the undefeated Jackrabbits, and then the Mustangs had their home opener on the 20th of November and beat Minnesota Morris 87-65. to And we're going to take a look at some of the highlights from the beginning of this season and starting off with the game versus Minnesota Morris, which uh, took place again at the RA facility. And Coach will t walk through these highlights, a nice road or home victory uh, for your squad, 87-65, to shot very well in the game, shooting 57%. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, and this is in the first half. And, uh, Taylor Hughes being you really established an inside game. And the one thing when you look at the at the end of the day when you look at the 21 assists that's uh, that shows that we were unselfish and it shows that we're taking steps to, to being an efficient basketball team on the offensive end. Uh, we have a ways to go. Uh, I would say our movement and our spacing has a ways to go but I think right now we have the right mentality. You know, Minnesota Morris coming into the game with a 2-0 record uh, with a couple of road wins, so a team that won their tournament championship a year ago. Mustangs led by 10 in the first half and or held a 10-point lead in the uh, first 20 minutes. And You see the action to the rim, which we talked about over time, and there's a drawing a foul there for the Mustangs. And Didn't hit a lot of three-pointers at all, but uh, again, you got to be happy with just uh, the ball rotation and, and getting, again, that ball. Good looks for your players. And that was a point of emphasis before the game, uh, and to not settle for three-point shots. Uh, we wanted to get out and run. We wanted to make it a high-possession game. And in doing that, making a high-possession game, we also wanted to be disciplined. When you, uh, when you try to make it, uh, pick up the tempo, sometimes you can lack discipline. Sometimes you can make some poor decisions. And that's where we try to limit. The, uh, defensively, I thought we did a good job of getting out and making some plays when we needed to most. Uh, as, you, uh, as you'll see here, we have a few transition clips later on where it, it's important to get out and run the floor, and we need to finish in those transition situations. You see Scott Rail and uh, Nick Smith here taking a couple of shots. Good effort by the freshman Smith. He had five rebounds in just 14 minutes. Scott Rail finished uh, 7 of 14, had 18 points and 14 rebounds, but this possession kept alive. You get a post touch into Nick Smith, misses it, but there is a big offensive board by uh, Zager and a finish. And again, Matt, 6 of 10 from the field. Now on the defensive side, and here's the plays you're talking about in transition. And a good unselfish play, Jordan Miller finding Nick Smith. Um, it's a, uh, That's one of the things that we have a little bit of more of a strength this year. I, I think we have maybe a little bit more athleticism, a little more speed, and hopefully we can take advantage of it. Hopefully uh, guys understand that when they need to run and how hard they need to run, and, and when they do get that ball up in, up in, in transition, they got to make smart decisions. 
SMSU shot 48% in the opening half and really got after it defensively, held the Cougars to just 32%. And here's a good example of that defense. And, and uh, there's their leading scorer, Berman, just forces up a shot clock violation. And uh, that's just what you're talking about, excellent defense. And that leads to, to good offensive play as well when you, you do it on the defensive end. And, you know, that's what helps you win basketball games, Coach. It's not always just scoring. It's getting stops on the defensive end. Uh, it just makes it that much more easier to score and, and get bigger leads. And we talk about momentum uh, a lot, where if you can get stops and you can get a couple buckets, you can get the momentum in your way. Uh, that's when, you know, that's when you can make big runs. And when you can make big runs, obviously good things will happen. There's a dunk by Zager. First collegiate dunk, I'm sure, for Matt in his three games. And again, defense underneath, Mustangs uh, keeping the arms straight up. Scott Rail again, the rebound. He had 14, his second double-double of the season. The Mustangs in transition. Bernard, freshman to freshman. That's uh, good to see for the Mustangs. And that's how they closed out the half, leading 38 to 28. Mustangs uh, led by, by 10. And we move on now to the second half. And you knew Morris would have a, come out strong to, to get back into the contest, and, and they did start strong, but you guys pulled away in the second half and did it by shooting 18 of 27 from the field for 67%. I will give credit to, uh, to the Morris basketball team. I, I thought they, a lot of the night, I thought they were hustling more. Uh, I thought they got to some loose balls, and that, that was something that we addressed after the game. And they, they came in with the right mentality, mentality. They came in with nothing to lose. Uh, they made some big shots. Uh, that Berman is, is a fine player for them and is a nice addition to their team. And, and once they get that, uh, another player back that was sitting out from injury, I think they're going to be a team uh, who's going to go on a run here throughout this season. Mustangs outscored the Cougars 40-22 to in the paint. There was a, a big three-pointer for SMSU. That was by Trent Carlson. Put the, S the Mustangs up by seven. Big offensive rebound for Jimmy Abraham, his only board of the day, but it was a big one, and that kept a, a possession alive. And not the, the tallest guy, but he went up there, and he wanted that ball, and he got it. As you'll see here, we'll work it around. Scott Rail will find Taylor Hughesby for a nice reverse layup. Uh, and, and Taylor's continuing that uh, the reverse layup as his go-to weapon, which it's hard to guard. Taylor Hughesby, when you get him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, his pivots and his, uh, the way he moves his body and the angles that he attacks, it's a tough, he's a tough defend, tough to defend him. And he's being the top six now in school history in uh, field goal percentage. And you see the offensive board there. Mustangs had 10. It was an and one for Scott Rail. And Mustangs doing a very good job at the free throw line as well this season. They're 19 of 22 in this game. And uh, on the season, knock on wood, are 89% through three games, which is a, a great percentage. And we continue on here in the second half as the Mustangs uh, win by 22 points. And uh, Bench outscored the Cougars 35-24. And, and uh, again, you'll see continuing some highlights. Uh, again, everybody kind of getting into the mix and into the scoring. And here's Bernard Birch on the, on the right wing. And good job of pulling it out, setting up the offense. And that allows uh, pretty much every guy on the floor to touch the ball. And as you see here, Jordan Miller scores a lot of his baskets off uh, baseline out of bounds plays. So, it's a situation where uh, that's good, great execution on our guys' part. Now we need uh, to get Jordan, in, you know, probably in some more of the half-court sets, uh, finding him, finding a way to get him shots. He uh, he has developed that ability to get to the rim, which is nice to see. Um, he is uh, going to be a main contributor for us as long as as well as Scott. Now we need to find a few more guys to step up in that scoring column, and uh, if we can be consistent <laughs> defensively, hopefully we can go on a run. We saw Zager with his first three of the game, or his only three, and there was Bernard Birch to go into the rack. He had six points, three assists, and two steals. As we continue on here in the second half, here's Derry Jones with the basketball, one of the true freshmen that we talked about uh, in the contest, and he hit a three uh, in this contest coming up right here on this possession. Good look, spots up, and drills it. Played a lot of minutes against South Dakota State, and here's Another three by the Mustangs, Jordan Budenhagen hits his first shot of his collegiate career at Southwest. And then Nick Smith, Smith with the block, one of six the Mustangs had in the contest, three by Scott Rail, and, and Mustangs just make it very difficult for the Cougars here uh, to end this contest, and, and that's how the game would end as uh, the Mustangs uh, win the contest by a score of 87 
to 65. Mustangs get the victory again, leading the way 20 points uh, with uh, was Matt Zager and uh, double double for Taylor Hughesby, 18 points and 14 rebounds, 14 points for Jordan Miller, and 10 for Taylor Hughesby as the Mustangs. Uh, uh, do pick up the win and uh, now are 2-1 and one overall. Before we talk about Northwest Missouri and this upcoming game, look back at Thursday night's game a week ago against South Dakota State and, and a team that's very good, uh, a Summit League team that will try to for, you know, be a favorite to get a top half in that conference. And again, they beat the University of Iowa this year already. Uh, talk about scheduling that type of game and, and uh, you know, I give you credit and it was you and Coach Steeman, you guys would play Division One schools, and not a lot of Division Twos do that. And and uh, you know you could schedule maybe an N another NAI team to come to Marshall, and but th this game really prepares you guys for conference, and that's what it's going to be about. And and uh, you know I think it's a big game for South Dakota State to play because they don't want to lose to Division Two. I think I know they make it out to be like it's the biggest deal for us to play them, and I don't think that's the case at all. But it's still it's a great game to play, and because you're going to get great competition and playing on the road. And we're very fortunate that South Dakota State will play us. Uh, that, like you said, they very easily they could very easily play another NAI or yeah. or a team who you know maybe they're a little more favored to win. But uh, now it's a game that uh, we um, it, it prepares us. Uh, not on paper, their height might not necessarily be similar to ours. Maybe they made a little shorter. But I tell you what, those guys are physical. Those guys know how to play the game. And when we went over there, they taught us a lot of things. I mean, they they took advantage of some mismatches where we uh, we have to improve. We have to improve defensively on how to handle some certain actions. And they made some tough shots. And they also outworked us in, in some areas. And a lot of it comes back to um, with our freshmen and new guys being able to step up that intensity in different environments. It's an environment that you go over there and we're a little out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. going on the road. And, and they really test you in a lot of different ways. So. It was a great game for us to prepare us for the NSIC, uh, very similar to the Northwest Mo game. Uh, that's a game where you go on the road and you don't know what to expect being the first game, but I thought our guys responded well. And then uh, now we came back against Morris and, and, and got that environment where we played at home. And sometimes when you play at home in that first, in the beginning of the year, there's some more distractions than there is on the road. Uh, you have your family in the stands, you have some friends in the stands, and uh, there's an adjustment with that too. So. Hopefully, we'll come in on this Saturday versus Northwest Missouri State, and it'll be another great game over Thanksgiving. Yeah, a very unique situation again, just a couple of weeks away, and the Mustangs play them now for a second time. SMSU did win 72 uh, 67. Jordan Miller led the way for Southwest with 21 points. We'll talk about the Bearcats. They've got a, a, a very balanced team. They've got some very you know, some veteran players as well, but a very good sophomore guard in Deshaun Cooper who had 17 points and six assists uh, in the first meeting between the teams. He was their, their conference newcomer of the year. Let's talk about the Bearcats because uh, they'll be a very good test. Uh, they'll be ready to go come uh, Saturday afternoon. Talk about what they bring to the table, uh, their strengths and weaknesses, or their strengths uh, that the Bearcats bring to Marshall. Well, with the Cooper and the Allen, uh, both of those guys are, are as talented as they get in D2 basketball. Uh, Cooper as far as his speed, I don't know if we'll see a guy faster than him throughout the year. Uh, he gave us fits down there. He's a guy who, as far as team defense, you have to have good team defense to stop that guy because not one guy is going to be able to cut him off. So we're going to have to improve on our rotations with him. We're going to have to handle some ball screen action with him a little bit better. Uh, Allen is a guy who he can score in a variety of ways. He's a big, physical, athletic kid who... You know, he can step out and shoot it, but at the same time, he's good at the one-on-one -on -one situations, and they do a great job of, of giving him space to work. Uh, so it's going to be a great team defensive effort on Saturday versus uh, the Bearcats. Well, again, it's a 3 o'clock start on Saturday at the RA facility, and the Mustangs will then start conference play the next weekend, December 3rd and 4th, at home versus Augustana College and Wayne State. Should be a great weekend of basketball as the Mustangs uh, start conference play. And before we finish up the sh show, Coach, and we'll talk more next week when we get into the conference play, but the uh, NSIC, again, uh, a great conference in basketball. Let's talk about some of the, the teams in this league. It's so deep again. And uh, Winona State, Mankato, Augustana, St. Cloud, a Final Four team. Uh, Wayne State's very good. Minnesota Moorhead, and Minnesota State Moorhead's better. Mary's, Mary's ready to go. Mary, a uh, so. top four team last year, in the, or top five in the conference. It's going to be a great league. Yeah, and it's, it, it starts off probably with Winona. Uh, the odds-on favorite. Uh, on, on paper, they're as good as 
as probably any of their teams that they've had in the past on paper. And we'll see if they can put it together. I think they're, uh, as a group, they have a lot of talent. Uh, St. Cloud, obviously, the defending champion, who uh, they have a lot of pride. And they did maybe lose a, an injury or lose a player to an injury for the season, potentially. But uh, I think they'll, they'll find a way to bounce back. They've had a few losses early, but I think a lot of that had to do with some injuries. And I think they'll be fine. Both Mankato, Augustana, both return some very talented players, some guys who are going to be key players in the conference. And it's a matter of how do they gel with their, uh, their new guys. I didn't even mention Concordia St. Paul, also a very nope. good team. And I mean, it, this league is uh, it's phenomenal. Every night there's going to be an upset or not yep. even an upset. Anybody can beat anybody, and, and, and it's proven that so far this season. There's been some very good road wins for teams in this league, and uh, it promises to be an exciting one. And it is, and hopefully... You know, the one thing about our conference is you can watch all the games online as well as getting to the games in person. But that makes it fun where if you're a fan from far away, you can still stay in touch with uh, the Mustangs. You can watch them at all their NSIC games, and uh, we uh, encourage you to do so. Yeah, you bet. Well, we'll talk more about Mustang basketball next week with the head coach, uh, Brad Bigler. I'm Kelly Loff. Thanks for watching this week's episode. Until next time, go Mustangs. We'll see you next week here on Mustang Basketball with Brad Bigler.